Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to start a fire with flint and steel. Now I know what you're saying. There are lots of YouTubes, YouTube videos uh, that show how to start a fire with flint and steel. The problem with most of those is that they neglect the critical element and that is the charred cloth. Charred cloth. So we're going to show you how we char the cloth. If you have charred cloth, starting a fire with flint and steel is relatively easy. If you don't have charred cloth, it's darn near impossible. I would just point out, by the way, that uh, starting a fire with flint and steel isn't really like a wilderness survival kind of a thing, because you have to have fire to char the cloth, obviously. Um, and if you're going to be carrying charred cloth around with you in the woods, why not just carry a lighter, right? Uh, but it's kind of a cool thing to uh, to know how to do if you're a, I don't know, if you're a reenactor or if you're into that kind of thing. So I've taken an old flannel shirt here. I'm going to wrap it up in some heavy-duty aluminum foil. Heavy-duty is key. Just wrap it up and it's smoking. Let's just start this for a second. Huh. Don't wrap this. The idea is we're going to heat it to a burning temperature to keep all the oxygen away from it. That's how charcoal is made, right? So, just like making charcoal, we're making charcoal out of cotton. Cloth. It helps to start with a nice flannel material like this, by the way. So I've got a double or triple layer of thickness all around here. And I'm going to put that on my fire. So come on outside. Okay, so here we go. We're outside. We've got our little campfire going here. And I'm just going to put the charred cloth on the fire. So but we're cooking away here. we got a long time to go. Um, don't let it go for a while, but you can see all that smoke is driving off. I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully you can see that smoke is driving off out of that packet. Okay, our tinfoil flannel shirt packet has been on the fire for about 10 minutes now. You can see it's smoking really well. I don't know if you can tell, but that smoke coming off there is actually burning. Um, I hope that's not getting too hot. By the way, don't try to, uh, oh yeah, see that breach there and it's coming out? That is flammable, highly flammable gas. Don't be uh, tempted to uh, unfold the foil and peek to see where your cotton is at because it'll just uh, go up in flames. Um, you just have to sort of do it by eye here and uh, hope that um, uh, you can kind of determine when it stops smoking. And when you pull it off, if it's not all charred, if there's some inside that's remaining uncharred, you know, that's okay. No big, no big crisis. So that, that might be all the way open to the core. That, of course, is not good at all. Although it's not a huge disaster. Okay, so this has been going for about half an hour now. And it looks like the amount of smoke escaping from the foil pack is pretty limited. So uh, we're going to take it off the fire. Now. Oh yeah, you can see that smoke coming out of there is burning. So there's still a little smoke in there, but hopefully most of the cloth is charred in there by now. So what I'm going to do here is stomp it out with my feet. Hmm, smell burning rubber and I suspect that's my tennis shoes. We will attempt to get all the oxygen out of there and keep it out until this is completely cool to the touch. I wonder if it opened up on the sides. No, it didn't really open up. I was afraid that this was open to the air. It actually held up. Oh, there's a little, little opening there, but that's nothing. That's nothing. All right, I'm going to fold it up let it sit for a while. Okay, here's the packet, ready for the big reveal. It's cold. Oh no, it's perfect. Just perfect. That's what you want. That's what you want. Still a little bit flexible. Doesn't turn to dust. Make sure it's cold. Great. Okay. So now you understand how to make the
the charred cloth. And that is the key to success when starting a fire with flint and steel. As far as I'm concerned, from here on out, it's easy stuff. Okay, so now that we've got the charred cloth, the next step is gathering tinder. So I'm here in my suburban backyard. And down here, we have a little, uh, what, messy area with some grass. That's what's March here in Wisconsin. This grass has been sitting out all winter. And it is very dry. This stuff is good tinder for all of this fuzzy stuff. That's enough of that stuff. Now I'm going to show you what we do here. I'm going to shred this stuff, but what tends to happen is the most valuable fine parts tend to fall down. So I'm going to do this over my over my period appropriate 175 gram frisbee here. So we catch all that fine stuff. What I can do is twist this stuff so that I expose as much fine surface area as possible. And you can see how much I lose when I do that. All that is good to have. If you should see anything green, anything at all, that is trouble. Get it out of there. I'll take this finest stuff and I'm going to make a little nest. Uh, we're not done yet. But wait, there's more. So I'm going to get some other stuff to go in there. So that'll come over here. This stuff is on the ground, but it's exposed to the sun during the day. And that will take a spark. Yeah, it feels a little moist to me. I'm not going to take that. These leaves. Yeah, a big one like that to hold everything up. And I think I'll grab some dried leaves too. I can find some dried leaves that are super dry. If you get something that's got a little dampness in it, it'll actually do more harm than good. Good. So I'm going to bundle all this up in a package that I can hold in my hands. So I've used my big leaf to hold it all. And uh, I've got all this fine stuff again on the bottom of my frisbee. I'm going to gather that up and put that where my thumb is here. So I have a real fine clump of material right in the middle. So fine, it's danger blowing away. Almost a dust. Find a spot for this where it's not going to blow away, and uh, get on to the part about building the fire. Okay, so the next step is to talk about our fire lay, and uh, the uh, point here is that when you catch that precious spark and you are able to fan it into a flame, you need to be able to do something with it. You don't want to get to that point and not be ready, okay? So if you're the kind of person who knows very well how to build a fire and um, you know can consistently start a fire with one match, fast forward through this, you won't need to know this. But uh, for anybody else, here's how to make sure you're ready to get the fire going once you do get that first flame. So you'll see I've sorted wood into piles here. These are very fine twigs. Um, pencil size, pencil size, or a little smaller than a pencil thumb-sized pieces and then uh, or finger-sized pieces and thumb-sized pieces up here. Once you get to this point, you'll be able to put bigger pieces on and get it going. For the small stuff, it's important to have really dry uh, wood. And even if you're in a situation where it's been raining, it's moist, you can always, almost always find dry wood, especially on a spruce tree like this. What you're going to look for are these branches that hang down completely dead and dry, they're somewhat shielded from the rain and they get plenty of breeze and sunshine coming through. Very, very fine little twigs here. If there's any green on it at all, like this, it's a reject. You can do the same with other kinds of trees. Cedars aren't bad. Dry. Dry is the key. It's got a snap. Be snappy. I'm going to save this. This stuff in my hand is even better than this stuff over here. 
That'll be the thing that takes the first fire. So I'm going to show you how we put this together. Start with a stick that is going to sort of hold stuff up off the ground. I don't want stuff on the ground or on the, in the dirt here. And I have to think about being able to shove my burning wad of tinder under something. I don't want to upset the whole apple cart when I put it in there. So I'm going to leave a little space here, have that sort of propped up, and then I can have my very finest tinder over that. Put these little sticks over that. It's sort of going to blow away. I have plenty of oxygen in there. Very tiny sticks. Can't stress that enough. And then finally some of these bigger pieces. That'll help weight it down. I want to make sure this is clear. This area is clear through here. So that when I'm this is gonna be burning in my hands so when I stick it under there, I want to have room to go without jabbing something that's gonna upset the whole pile. Alright? Okay, last we're ready for our flint and steel. This is what I use for steel. It's just a chisel, obviously. There are a lot of different kinds of steel. You could use the back of a hatchet or something. I find that this particular steel works very well. Um, you know, I don't know what flint is. I just use any old rocks. They all seem to work fine. This has got a lot of quartz in it. This is just a piece of, I don't know, chert, what you call that? And you can't really see it in the daylight, but get the sparks off there. Let's see that better probably. So, got my little pile of tinder here and a charred cloth. Put those together. Don't need much. Gonna have a nice Large target, however. And I'm going to strike the steel with the flint and try to land a spark in that charred cloth. And you'll see it'll immediately glow. That charred cloth will hold that spark for a second. Now you see why it's important to be able to pick that up. I'm going to put the camera down and uh, take another take here. Okay, so now we're down to it. Got our carefully prepared tinder bundle, our carefully prepared charred cloth, our steel, our flint, and let's see if we can land a spark in there. There's one. I don't know if you can see that glowing there. And uh, so that's just going to hang on there. If I make it dark, you can see it's glowing fine. Pick that up. And there's flame. Plenty of action gets in there. And that is how to start a fire with flint and steel. Just in time, too. It's chilly out here. Ooh. Fire good.